welcome to the Do It Again God podcast. My name is Laura, and I am here with my friend Krista. Hi, I'm Krista, and I love Laura so much. <laughs> oh, I love you too, Krista. <laughs> All right. Today on the Do It Again God podcast, we are going to talk about what it looks like to be a faithful Christian wife, because you've done it so beautifully as an example for me. Hmm. Um, so we are just going to go through some different things, and we hope you enjoy. So Krista, tell us a brief timeline or history of your walk with the Lord, like starting mm-hmm. even as a child. Well, I was thinking about that question, and I've really known the Lord all my life, mm-hmm. raised by such a wonderful family. My parents are wonderful. Um, there were seven kids in our family, so considered a bigger family. Um, but I honestly can't say there was ever this like, moment of, oh, I remember that's when I came to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. Um, But my childhood, my upbringing was wonderful. Of course, it wasn't perfect, but it was, it was something I remember Joyce Meyer saying, you better get on your knees and be thankful to Jesus if you had godly parents. So I, I'm very thankful for my upbringing. Um, I think the moment that I really committed myself and knew this was for myself Mm -hmm. and not just like what my parents were showing me is probably in middle school when we went to like a bible camp and the lord just really really touched my heart Mm -hmm. and it was kind of this cool moment of just like really hungering after him and like getting in my bible not just like doing it as a family but doing getting it by myself the hunger came there Mm -hmm. um so yeah, it's been like a journey totally. with the Lord. It's uh, it's always been, I, I'm so thankful for him. Yeah. So were your parents both raised that way as well? Or did it start yes. with them they and were, their marriage? They were both raised in godly homes. Sure. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. Yeah. That's cool. It, it is. It's a blessing. Yeah. So I can picture you on your knees thanking the Lord for yes. Dwayne and Shirley. Yes. Shout out Dwayne and Shirley. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So um, with the Do It Again God podcast, I really wanted to highlight mm-hmm. others' testimonies. And the Lord gave me when I thought of Krista Agramson, I still call her Krista Agramson oh, too. Yes. Yeah. Um, about just being a Christian wife and how you have kind of mentored me in that way, hmm. but also how you live that out. Hmm. Um, so back in 2019, so almost mm-hmm. five years ago already, yeah. your husband, Mike, gave a sermon titled Love and Respect. Mm-hmm. And I can just remember that was like a moment where like the Lord started stirring in my mm-hmm. heart. Um, and later in that year, you and some other gals from church had actually prayed over me as yeah. well. Yeah, I have it. Yeah. I got to show this post-it note in my Bible here because that was just like It was so influential and I don't, Hmm. I don't know that I really even agreed with you. Like when you prayed with me, but (laughs) from October 13th of 2019, I was talking with you, Coralie, Kim, and Megan Hmm. about the topic of submission. Hmm. Um, And your, your loving advice was to let them lead even when that feels hard. Yeah. Because a lot of times it feels hard. Yeah. Very hard. Mm -hmm. And you've talked too about like, since the fall, mm-hmm. it's in, it's in our nature, our yes. sinful nature to want yeah. to come over our husbands. Yeah. So yeah. can you talk a little bit more about that too, about like the way that God designed us, but then yeah. our sinful nature coming alongside of yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this was just recently, we kind of discovered that when it says in Genesis, um, part of the curse for Eve, for us women thanks why <laughs> is that childbirth pains and then it later says and you will desire your husband um and you know you read that initially and it's like oh wow that kind of sounds like a good thing yeah. but it actually um it in a it it's desire but it means to control yeah it translates to yes, that it translates yeah. to control and that is totally, 
you can just see it. Mm -hmm. And for us women, I feel it even. Yeah. I mean, it's a feeling maybe we could say where you just uh, you just want to rise up and you want to take over the situation yeah. for your husband. Um, and it's part of the fallen nature. So that's where we have to bring Jesus into it. Yeah. I think that's why I disagreed with you so much. Cause yeah. like, what do you mean? Let Adam lead me. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, even my defense was up right yes. then when you said that. Yes. Um, but I have to share this too. The cool part at the bottom of my post-it note here in July of 2021. So like a significant amount mm. of time later, Yeah. I know that, you know, a Two years doesn't seem like that long, but mm. in the day to day, oh, it can seem sure. really hard. Yeah. But I walked out to our living room and Adam was reading in his Bible and he was like so fired up about awesome. it. And he's like, you got to, you got to read this. Yeah. And even, yeah. you know, from where we were at in 2021 to where we are today, yes. to see him leading yes. as a husband has been so different too. Yes. Yeah. 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 So even though in 2019, I didn't really know about your advice, <laughs> it's been, you know, it it's, had to take a while to sink in. It did. And totally. that's okay. Sometimes those things take time, especially mm -hmm. when we're so used to the way you're raised, possibly um, what we see in culture. And it just takes time for that healing process where God, his spirit just begins to say, Hey, this is biblical mm -hmm. and this is, I got to do a work in your heart. I'm doing a work in your husband's heart, but I got to do a work in your heart. Right. Yeah. And I think that was the greatest thing about it. Just thinking back to my old self or, you know, like as a young Christian, mm -hmm. you never came and like pointed your finger at me mm -hmm. or was like, you know, mm -hmm. Laura, you are doing this wrong. You're doing mm -hmm. this backwards. You just simply said like, let's open our Bibles and mm -hmm. see what God has to say about this. Yeah. And then let me pray over you. Yeah. 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 Did you yeah. learn that somewhere or <laughs> is that like something that the Lord has shown you over your journey too? Um, you're just so gracious. Oh, thanks. Lord. Yeah. Well, even like when it's a hard thing or, you know, that someone is maybe not walking mm. with the Lord, you're so gracious to just bring it right back to. Yeah. Well, I think Lord. we both know, I mean, this is, this is living and active. It's the truth. It's what sets us free. Mm -hmm. So if anything, it's what we have to lean into because my words are nothing, mm -hmm. you know, I can say as much as I want out of what I know, but if it's the word of God, there's so much power behind the word of God. So mm -hmm. I think, yeah, just knowing these are the words that are the most powerful. So I'm going to try to speak that over the situation mm -hmm. or the person or myself even. Yeah. yeah. I think that's one thing that I'm learning in my journey too, is I never even had a Bible until I started coming to R River. Mm -hmm. How have you had a Bible for as long as you can remember? As long as I can remember. Yeah. Yeah. How cool yeah. is that? And what's really cool is most homes, it seems like, have a Bible mm -hmm. somewhere. So there's always an opportunity to read a Bible. But yeah, I think, I mean, there's the Gideon's Bibles too, but there's always an opportunity. I think most homes in today's, I don't know, especially in our area, you know, um, they're, they're, yeah, most homes have a Bible. Yeah. So there, and, and I love what you said, like you could talk about it till you're blue in the face, but <laughs> let's go to the word and yes. see what God has to yes. say about it. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go back and talk more about like the home that you grew up in and the way that like, how did your parents model mm. what God intended for marriage? Mm -hmm. Well, I always preface, it wasn't perfect. Yeah. And, you know, when I talk, it maybe sounds perfect, but it wasn't. But mom and dad did a great job where dad was the one who sat at the table with us and opened his Bible and taught us the word of God. Mm -hmm. Mom did too. Um, if dad was gone or whatever, or dad would say, surely, do you want to share something? And she would share something. But yeah. The majority of the time, dad would wake us up at 630 in the morning before school. It was still dark outside and we'd walk up and we'd sit at the table and we. Yeah, oh. I think I remember a sermon where I don't know, maybe it was even Tim that was talking about it, but he would like have his hood yeah. on. He'd be, yeah, 
but it was it was such a part of our routine mm -hmm. and it just was like okay here we go yeah and you know at the time it probably was like oh bible time but i look back and i see just the power of my dad leading us mm -hmm. in that and uh another way my dad would just show a biblical way is just by waking us kids up and we would go to church mm -hmm. every sunday Another cool thing about that, though, is there were Sundays that dad would wake us up and say, we're going to stay home today, kids, because mm. he wanted to show us that church wasn't everything. Mm -hmm. And I, I, all of us remembered those times. Yeah. And uh, dad would also take mom on dates mm. at least once a week. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even that is a model of just dad kind of showing that leadership of just like, I'm going to take my wife because I cherish her and I love her. Yeah. And you kids second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can actually remember a time where Adam and I were joking. We we're like going to Walmart to buy diapers is our date. Yeah. And at that point it really was, you yeah. know, we didn't really know the importance of like carving time out mm. away from the kids mm -hmm. to just like sit and relax with each yeah. other. So yeah. 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 But it sounds like your dad did a really great job of he did. like he did just mm -hmm. showering your mom with love. Yeah. And still to this day, I yes. mean, when I see them Yes. I can still tell that they're yes. like madly in love with each they other. Are. Yeah. They're inseparable. <laughs> How long have your parents been together? Do you know? I think it's 40 years or oh, more. Wow. Yeah. They just said it the other day when we were together. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Do you know how long they were married before they started having kids? Uh, it could have been like two years. Okay. Or so. so they had yeah. a couple years together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you kids are all pretty close in age, right? Yeah. 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 Very close. And then Josh... Well, there was a six-year gap there. Mm -hmm. He was a surprise baby. Okay. So yeah. how many kids are there from old or years, mm -hmm. oldest to youngest? Do you know? So there's 16 years. Okay. Kim was 16 and then Josh was born. Oh. Yeah. But there was a few in there that were pretty close sure. in age. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. But how cool that you can remember even as a kid. Yeah. M like mom and dad being so devoted yeah. to each other. And yeah. I mean... It's it's still vivid yeah. just to remember dad just say, I'm taking your mom on a date. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And I think it like in my experience, parenthood is hard. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the my parents made it look so easy. They did yeah. such a great job. Like, I oh, I think this is just going to be no big deal. I know. And so to just know... Like, okay, we need to take a break from that yeah. and refocus on each other is yes, just so important. It is. Yeah. yeah definitely. Cool. So, okay, going on then, you explained so sweetly after praying for me, after giving me this advice that the man must be leading a godly life. Mm -hmm. And you kind of just touched on that now, but what do you think or how can what are practical ways that a man can lead a godly life mm -hmm. well i think there's just so much power in like you mentioned about your husband adam reading the bible mm -hmm. you know when a wife sees her husband reading the Bible. There's just so much power in that. Yeah. And I think that's it. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes that's the that's answer. All, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes that's all you need is just to just be in the word and study the word. Uh, I think there's so many things that come after that, you know, uh, bring, bring your family to church. Mm -hmm. My, my husband, Mike, he says he loves it when he sees the wife is at home for some reason, but the husband is bringing the kids. Mm -hmm. That's so powerful to see that. Yeah. Like he's he's leading the way. Mm -hmm. um, and I I believe a huge one too is just saying I'm going to take your my wife your mom to the kids mm -hmm. on a date. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of those practical things. Um, and every marriage is different, but I think the most important for a husband would just be get in the Word of God mm -hmm. and study it. Just the power of reading the word. And it says in Ephesians 5 that having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word. Mm. So there's power in our husbands reading the word of God. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Cool. 
I also just want to take a moment to shout out Root River Community Church because that is the church that Adam and I have been going to for um, almost six years, and it has just been so life-changing for mm, us. Yeah. And um, it is a Bible-believing church. It is so family-friendly. They mm. have nursery for kids during yes. the sermon, so parents can get the most out of the message. Um, but they also have a website, head to rootriver.org, and they have all kinds of sermons listed online. And then you can also find their locations. There's a campus in Rushford and a campus in Harmony, mm -hmm. and then yeah. the times are listed as well. Mm -hmm. So a uh, story is one time I was taking a shower and I I was getting really angry at Mike inside of mm. myself, and I was ready to just get out there and say something to him. <laughs> and I felt the Holy Spirit say, not right now, Krista. Mm. And I was like, yeah, but I am right, and uh -huh. I'm going to go. Uh -huh. And it was still that nudge inside saying, no. Well, I didn't listen to the nudge. I went and I said something, and it just spiraled, mm. and it and it wasn't done in love. It was because I was angry. I was beginning to desire and it spun out of control. And I still remember the whole evening was just kind of ruined. Mm. And I just thought, Oh, if I only would have listened to the Holy spirit, he said, not right now. Yeah. And, you know, maybe if I had something to share, which we have a voice, mm -hmm. I should have waited maybe to the next day when things were a little calmer with myself. Sure. Um, but I, I just went for it. Mm -hmm. And I just, well, I'll never forget that of an example of when you feel that, like, not right now, mm -hmm. just don't do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can totally relate. Actually, we just, before Mike's recent sermon on marriage, I think mm -hmm. maybe back in January, I had that same thing happen where mm -hmm. I was like so mad and I had the little nudge, but I'm like, no, but seriously, I am mad about this. It feels good. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I went for it and like our kids were in the car with us oh, and yeah. they were in tears all of a sudden. <laughs> and like our middle guy was asking like, are you guys getting divorced? Because, oh, yeah. you know, there was a time where like fighting was very normal yes. in our home. Yes. And now like, it's just so few and far between yeah. because we've both grown so much and we can yeah. have the tough conversations in yeah. love. But yeah, then once in a while that sinful nature comes out yes. and and yes. I think it just like puts a whole nother level to it mm. when the kids yeah. see it Experience or it. Yeah. even if they don't see it, they yeah. know that, you know, yeah. something's off between yeah. mom and dad. For sure. Mm -hmm. Totally. So living a faithful Christian wife or submitting to your husband, mm -hmm. what does this look like for you? like mm -hmm. day to day. Mm -hmm. I kind of referenced that a little bit. Like sometimes there's this huge transformation mm -hmm. over years of time. Yeah. But what are some good like day to day? Yeah. What's a little sneak peek into the day to day life yeah. of Krista as a wife? I don't do it perfectly. Mm -hmm. Okay. At all. I, I say I need the fruits of the spirit and love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Um, and I think it looks like where, let's see, day to day, just knowing God is in control of him. I am not in control of him. Mm. And say we're sitting at the dinner table and he's leading us in a, in a Bible study. And I have something I want to say too. And I jump up and I, but trying as much as I can to allow him to say it. Now, mm -hmm. I still say stuff, but again, it's that moment of like, is this the right time? Mm -hmm. Am I trying to prove to my children, to Mike even, that, hey, I I know that more maybe. Yeah. Um, but allowing him to be that man of God that the Lord's called him to be. Mm -hmm. um, disciplining our kids, that's another one of just like, releasing that not like saying it's all him but just you know we've had conversations where we talk to each other like what is, what should this look like what should we do mm -hmm. and a lot of times i say mike whatever you feel the lord is telling you just do it yeah go for it yeah um a lot of like bigger decisions you know like just what we do with our kids or 
finances. I honestly just say it's whatever you think. Mm -hmm. And I know some people might be against that, but I tell you what, when you release it because God's put them in that leadership role, there is almost this burden that is released off of your shoulders. Yeah. of just like, it's not mine to carry. Mm -hmm. It's yours. Yeah, right. <laughs> it, it's Jesus, but it's, it's because God says that he should mm -hmm. be the leader. Right. And, and is calling him to do that. And it's like, okay, this is yours. And again, we do it together, but yet the, it's like, okay, what are you sensing from the Lord? Mm -hmm. Um, and just knowing also husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church. So in that sense too, knowing my husband has been loving me. So therefore it's easier to come under his authority right. as well. Yeah. So it's not this like, well, he's treating me like dirt. So how can I do that? It's like, no, I, I am being cherished. I'm being washed in the word. Yeah. Again, not perfect, but there's a rhythm there going on. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think some of the things that I've heard too are like, if the kids come up and ask, you know, a question, even something as simple as saying like, well, let me check with dad about that. Yes. Or yeah. um, like if we are trying to come to a decision together, just mm -hmm. saying like, I trust that you are going to yes. make the right decision. Yeah. And like you said, like, it's not like some yucky thing mm -hmm. where the husband's like, no. I'm leading yes. this and, yeah. you know, it's totally a team effort, yes. but with the man being the head of yes. the home, yes. the way that God intended him yes. to be. Yeah. 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 Because I think it's so beautiful too. A lot of people will say that God took Eve mm -hmm. from Adam's mm -hmm. side, mm -hmm. you know, like he, yeah. sh he or she is not in front of the other. No. They're side by side. Side by side. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And just the order that God has why would you go against God's order? Mm -hmm. And we see it so much in our world right now. It's just, it goes against the order and it's chaos. Mm -hmm. Chaos is but a good way God to God is it. a God of order. And when there's order, there's just harmony and mm -hmm. it's beautiful. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it does seem like I can speak to people, you know, in a, in a relationship where it's not that way. Mm -hmm. um, and you just don't know, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you just yeah. don't know until yeah. you experience God's grace yeah. in your marriage, yeah. what it could mm -hmm. feel like. It's mm -hmm. that peace that surpasses yes. all understanding. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Mm -hmm. So what, let's talk about like some of those harder times, mm -hmm. like, you know, maybe after a big fight or mm -hmm. when you're not agreeing or, mm -hmm. you know, tough decisions in parenting, what are some things that you do in the valleys mm -hmm. where it feels like it's been a while, you know, this yeah. has kind of been strung out. Yeah. It's feeling maybe like the Lord is a little bit quiet or yeah. you just don't know where to turn. Yeah. What are some things that you in our marriage? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What are some things yeah. that you do in the valleys? Yeah. Because like you said, it's not perfect. It's no. not always like, oh, no. it's so great. No. no. Our valleys tend to come after, right after a baby. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, because there's just, there's a lot going on mm -hmm. and we have seven kids. So every baby, it's just like, it, there's just an extra amount of like, whoo, this has gotten just a little bit busier. Mm -hmm. um, but what I have learned and I'm still working towards is just in those valleys when I, when we feel like we've gotten off the, or we, they call it the crazy cycle when we got on the crazy cycle mm -hmm. is beginning to pray for my husband mm -hmm. rather than nag my husband, mm. um, beginning to see the good and not just the bad. And I've noticed there, I mean, Mike has shared this so many times, but the time where I was just longing for him to pray with us. Yeah. I was just like, Oh, and not, I was just like, can we just pray together? And, and it just seemed like it would just, you know, you know, it just brought him lower yeah. and he just is like, stop kind of stop telling me what to do, you yeah. know, in a sense, even in like something that would benefit your family. Thing. Yeah. Like it was yeah. a good thing, but, but to him, to his eyes, it was like me grabbing the whistle and coaching him, like saying, you're not doing enough. You need to pray. 
Um, and again, there's a time and a place to communicate those things, but I was doing it over and over and over to the point he was just feeling just defeated mm. as a husband and as a father. Finally, I just started to pray. I mm-hmm. said, God, would you please bring a godly man in his life that would challenge him and encourage him? Yeah. And I can't remember how much longer after, because sometimes it happens like, and it's like, oh my goodness, it just happened. Yeah. Or it might be months mm-hmm. or years mm-hmm. and you're praying. But it didn't have, I mean, it was maybe a week or so and someone did mm. and he was challenged by it. And it was so exciting. Yeah. See, oh my word, God answers my prayers. Now there are issues that are much, much bigger that are out there that I can't even begin to understand. I mean, there are things that are harder, you know, maybe your husband isn't following Jesus mm-hmm. and there's that. And I've never experienced that, but it is amazing when it says that they will be won over by a quiet and submissive wife. Mm -hmm. And that is huge. And our prayers are so powerful. And it could be a lost husband, or it could be a husband who's not praying. It could be little, little things Mm -hmm. even. Um, Like, I want him to snuggle with me on the couch, you know, but I don't want to keep nagging him about him. But maybe, Lord, I just pray that my husband will snuggle with me. Yeah. And who knows, you know, it could happen and, and hopefully prayerfully it will happen. So there's just something in, um, not nagging Mm -hmm. and we all know what nagging is. So it's like the, the, the persistent widow in Luke 18, where she keeps knocking and Mm -hmm. knocking. And finally the judge says, okay, I'm going to give you what you want. Mm -hmm. And what I say is instead of being the nagging wife to your husband, be a nag to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like just keep saying, knocking, Lord, I want this. I, I desire this. He knows our desires and he, he, he says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So as we come to him more and delight ourselves in the Lord and asking for our husbands on behalf of our husbands, he will give those desires. We got to be persistent sometimes. So don't nag your husband, nag Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's so good. That reminds me of our angel squad gathering one night where I, we were going around the table, just like asking for prayer. And there was something that had come up and I was like, but if I don't tell Adam, who's going to? Yeah. And our friend Olivia was so sweet and she, you know, she stayed quiet for a little bit. And then she brought me to Proverbs, the same one Mm. um, from the love and respect sermon that says better to live on the corner of a roof than Mm -hmm. share a house with a quarrelsome wife. Yes. And she just like so encouraged me. Yeah to take it to God and let yeah. Holy Spirit work it out in yeah. Adam. I yeah. didn't have to do anything. Yeah. So that was really encouraging. Yeah. And yeah. I just think too, like how brave of Olivia, Yes. you know, yeah. to encourage me in that way yeah. of like, well, you don't need to tell him anything. Yes. Cause yeah. that can be hard yeah. to say to somebody. It can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. And one other thing, um, I had been listening to another podcast and she had, I think I told you about this at school today, mm-hmm. but she had recommended this little devotion called The Power of a Praying Wife. Yeah. And she said that she had order it, ordered it um, because she noticed like her and her husband were bickering a yeah. lot. Yeah. And she's just like, okay, this is not getting me anywhere. Yeah. So she just like started praying for her husband daily. Yeah. Yeah. And it it's so cool because I'm only, you know, a little ways into it, but it's talking about his work, mm. his finances, mm. being his wife. Yeah. So it's like very practical things yeah. to pray about, things that yeah. are going to come up. Yeah. Things that you might fight about, you know, yeah. about yeah. your finances yeah. or mm-hmm. the day to day. So it's mm-hmm. very practical. Yeah. So I would totally recommend that to anybody, the power yes. of a praying wife. Yes. So thinking about your situation, you know, being this wife coming under your husband's authority or submission, Mm -hmm. even though we know that those words Mm -hmm. can be very perverted or just taken out of context. Yeah. But what encouragement do you have 
for wives yeah who maybe like aren't quite there yet yeah. or other than you know continuing to go to prayer in battle yeah. maybe it's a wife who's who's been yeah walking a faithful life yeah. for years and years and years yeah do you have any specific encouragement for them i do just keep praying just keep praying yeah no really just keep pursuing jesus mm -hmm. in the situation God gave me a picture years ago of what so many times of us wives, we want to blow the whistle. We want to be the coach. Mm -hmm. But God, he calls us wives to be the, the cheerleader. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think kind of making, just making light of it a little bit and not making it such a serious thing because when you make it serious, it just becomes that. And my husband's never going to follow Jesus. My husband's never going to do this or do this or whatever. But instead, okay, I'm going to become his cheerleader. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get my little pom-pom, my little skirt, and I'm going to get dressed up and I'm going to cheer my husband on. Mm -hmm. And again, if you're in a situation where it's the husband is not being kind you know, there, there's, there's levels yeah. too. We know we don't condone, of course, the abuse or anything like that, mm -hmm. or even control. Right. Um, but when there's maybe where you're just like, what if my husband is just like mean to me? Yeah. Or just doesn't say kind things or, um, isn't on the same journey as I am with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I think the encouragement would be first, Try to find some women in your life that can pray with you and not bash your husband. The word of God never says, come together and let's degrade our men. No, it's so important to speak highly of your husband, but it's also okay to be like, hey, I'm really struggling. My husband is not being kind and I, I truly do care about him. Yeah. And have someone, even if it's just one other lady, just praying with you mm -hmm. and just cheering you on yeah. as well in that journey. Um, but again, just go to Jesus um, with your situation and just ask him to intervene. And it's it's amazing. He is at work mm -hmm. and he loves you. He loves your husband so, so much. It doesn't mean he's just going to cross his arms and say, it's up to you. Prayer is saying, God, I can't do this. So you need to take control. Yeah. And you'll see it at work and it, it will happen. And find a, a good church. Come to Root River. Mm -hmm. We'd love for them to come here or another wonderful church nearby to find support. And just we've seen so many within our church family where that has happened, where there is growth with their men yeah. as they begin to just pray for them. Totally. Mm -hmm. That's actually what I was going to say too, is the, just the vulnerability that you can have with mm -hmm. our church body and, you know, likely other church bodies in the area yeah. too, is that you can come and you can just say like, Oh man, yeah. I am really struggling with yes. this. Yeah. And nobody's like even caught off guard or yeah. we're you all, know <laughs> we're all struggling. Right? In we're one all way stumbling or <laughs> with something. Yeah. And so they're just so encouraging in, you know, taking it to the Lord, yeah. encouraging you. Mm -hmm. And I I was going or I was thinking about one of the things that you said too about being a cheerleader, like you might have to start small. Yeah. It might be yeah. like the yeah. smallest thing yeah. that you just say like, Hey, I noticed yeah. that yeah. X, Y, Z yeah. or yeah. Hey, thanks for yeah. X, Y, Z. Yeah. Um, so it might not be like no. a life changing. Yeah. And maybe cheer. don't expect something huge to happen right away. Yeah. Put your expectations really low where you see him, um, go to church with you. Yeah. And I mean, don't be overbearing, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we're going to hell. <laughs> yeah. But just say, hey, thanks for taking us to church. Mm -hmm. Boom. Yeah. That's all you need. Totally. Yeah. Cool. So let's talk a little bit too about the way that like culture or society mm -hmm. kind of puts a spin on marriage or what they're showing in TV shows mm -hmm. or commercials or movies yeah. or 
you know, like what society has kind of told us is normal. Yeah. 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 I mean, you see, we actually, as a family, like we don't have, we don't watch a ton of TV because commercials are just terrible these days. But when we do watch them, we kind of almost take a tally of like, oh, the husband is the stupid one and the wife is the hero. And it's just amazing. And once you catch on to it, you're like, it is. Mm. It's almost in every movie, every like probably sitcom. Yeah. Is that what you call them? Yeah. Um, and then commercials of just the husband is the dumb one. Mm -hmm. And maybe not even the husband, but the man mm -hmm. is the dumb one and the wife is the one. And again, we're not saying that like wives don't have like we we totally can like we can do things we can have children so much better yeah right <laughs> <laughs> we can do things better than our husbands and vice versa our husbands do be things better than us mm -hmm. or man and women and our culture just has just shown where it it's just the man is stupid mm -hmm. and he just is degrading and and drinks, you know, he just sits there and plays video games or whatever, which is not bad, but it's just this persona of always doing these things mm -hmm. where the wife is the one taking care of the kids and maybe she's the one out doing everything when in reality, it's really not always like that. Right. Yeah. I know. I'm even just like picturing like this mom f trying to fly around doing everything on her own, you know, yeah. grocery shopping, get, getting the kids yeah. to school. And it's just. And he's the deadbeat dad. Yeah. Who doesn't right. do anything. He's like sitting on the couch watching yeah. football. Or... So the husbands or men are watching that just saying, well, you know, maybe without even realizing it. Well, I guess that's who I am mm -hmm. when really God's called them to be much more than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what do you think, this one's a good one, what do you think that your marriage or like your role as a wife, um, might look like to somebody who doesn't know the Lord, who doesn't even know that oh, this yeah. is how the Lord designed marriage? Yeah. I saw that question. Um, I think it might be offensive, mm -hmm. honestly, mm -hmm. to some, um, women. It, in fact, it has become offensive you know, where people don't like it. But my question is, or my answer maybe more is, I have the best marriage ever. Yeah. <laughs> I feel wonderful. I feel at peace. So it's almost like bothering them. It's bothering them. And but it, for it's not us, bothering you know, them. and they might say, well, you, you're under control. And I don't feel that way at all. Mm -hmm. And because there's, there's a communication between my husband and I where this is usually how it happens is we, we're sitting on a couch, the kids are sleeping, we're sitting on a couch, and maybe I've had something I need to talk to him about, and that's when I do it, mm -hmm. and I communicate with him. Now, it's not always done graciously all the time. Um, there's definitely moments where I'm like, you know, <laughs> but I'm I'm working towards where timing is everything, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what I would want people to see is yeah. just this communication between my husband and I of, hey, I noticed you did this the other day and I didn't really like it. Mm -hmm. Can we can we talk about that? Yeah. You know, or, hey, I think we really need to do, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how it's I've just been working on where we both are just at that place of like. There's, it's not like he comes in the door and I'm like, I can't believe you, you know, I mean, there's those moments. Yeah. Again. <laughs> okay. My sin nature comes out, mm -hmm. but it's as a person looking and I would hope maybe they would see, you know, this, this, um, rhythm, if you want to say harmony of just like things are gelling really good. Yeah. Like it's a good balance of it's love and balance. respect. But to some, yeah, it might be like, well, like, for instance, I say, hey, Mike, can I go for a run right now? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, logistically with our kids and everything, but to some women that might be like, well, why does she even need to ask? Yeah. Are she you getting just, his permission? Yeah. She should just go. Yeah. But I actually don't mind asking my husband because, first of all, I want to make sure everything's okay. Right. You know, um, and it. You know, the way we spend our money. I've never 
behind his back spent anything mm-hmm. except if it was my birthday money. Yeah, that you totally deserve to I spend however you want. That's totally random. We just had a conversation about this actually. Yeah. Um, processing. Why do I do those things? Why do I buy violins oh. and massage guns? Did you buy a violin? I did. You needed another instrument in your house, didn't you? Well, you know, oh. I was, just had this dream. But that's the way I just enjoy spending it anyway. Yeah. I would never go and do that behind his back Mm -hmm. because I've learned to just like, just say like, what do you think? Yeah. And if he says not right now, then I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. And it's really gotten to that point. And again, I don't feel like I'm under the spell of control. I just feel like I'm living the way God wants me to. Yeah. And, and like Mike is is getting his discernment from the Lord too. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's not. Yeah. And he goes he, and, and he yeah. spends money too. Right. But he's not yeah. going out and making these ridiculous purchases no, without and he, you he either. He asked me, mm-hmm. you know, there's, again, there's communication. Yeah. Communication is so huge no matter what. Mm-hmm. And because it's happening between the two of us, there's just a good rhythm going yeah. on. I think that's good to speak to though. Cause I can remember even like early on in, in, our relationship between Adam and I, it was like, well, this is my paycheck. Why? Yeah. You know, cause that can be a hard thing of like deciding to put Mm -hmm. your money together. And I know that there's people that, you know, they have separate bank accounts and that works for them. Yeah. Um, so even just having those types of conversations and I think that we had kind of come to the conclusion and I can't remember if this is from the Dave Ramsey class Mm -hmm. or not. Um, but like anything under a hundred bucks, mm. go ahead, you know, yeah. but yeah. anything that's over a hundred dollars, it's probably going to be a significant yeah. purchase. Yeah. Why don't you just say like, yeah. Hey, this is on my mind. I what are your that's thoughts? Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's where every couple is so different. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe the husband is the spender. Yeah. So there's just, but there, that's where the communication comes in. Mm-hmm. And for our marriage, the way we do it, it just works. Mm-hmm. And of course we're always working on it too but we've just find okay this is this is great and we have one credit card Mm -hmm. and he is the one who is out and about mostly so he's the one who takes it Mm -hmm. not that he's like i have control of it but i just don't need it yeah at all and that really helps too because there there's just always like we're just spending money together right yeah but Again, like to the world or to somebody that doesn't really know Very the Lord, that probably. could be yeah. like a huge. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Mm. And again, that's not saying you have to do it that way. Right. That's just all. what works for our, for you guys, for our marriage. That's yeah. what works. Yeah. Cool. Is there anything else that the Lord has put on your heart to share with others? Hmm. I think just really know that. The Lord loves you, loves your marriage, loves your husband, and he's not done. He's not done working through your lives. Mm -hmm. Don't ever stop praying, and God does hear your prayers, and he's working in your prayers. And I would say number one is get in the word of God. Totally. And begin, even in John, a lot of people suggest John Mm -hmm. or Psalms, which is usually you just open it. It's right there in the middle of the the Bible and just start right there um, and just see what God's going to do. I, the journey with the Lord is so exciting. Mm -hmm. It, It, yes, there's trials and things we go through, but when you just begin to just submit your life to Jesus, it's just awesome. Mm -hmm. And, with your husbands, with your children, whatever. It's just, it's wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. I even think back to like maybe some people who will be watching this video and, you know, Mm -hmm. maybe they haven't seen Adam and I Mm -hmm. in years and they are probably thinking like, this cannot be the same Mm -hmm. Adam and Laura that Mm -hmm. we knew. Yeah. Right. Just because of the transformation that God has done in our lives and in our marriage. And so we can see it. Yeah. And it's so cool to Mm -hmm. see just you, I re- I still remember, I kind of remember what you were wearing, what your hair was like and everything. Do you really? And you were in tears because you weren't sure that at that time you weren't sure, do we go all in or not? Mm-hmm. And it was, it was a journey for you. It was. And then outside of these doors, I still remember praying with you and to see where you've come. Yeah. It's just your maturity level in the Lord mm-hmm. is just astounding, like amazing. Yeah. And 
your family and what's happening. So it's so cool to see God at work mm-hmm. in you. Yeah. And you're doing this. Which I is know. So cool. So cool. I just oh yeah. yeah. And that is really my hope for the podcast is that anybody watching this like. Like Krista said, mm-hmm. like I was snot nosed on the mm-hmm. floor as a wife, like, mm-hmm. what do I do? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And just thinking about the transformation. So I have been there. I have been in the darkest of dark yeah. and just wondering, like, yeah. this can't be it. Yeah. Right? right. What can I do? And so that's why I just am like so thankful again that you mm-hmm. just had the grace to mm-hmm. encourage me and mm-hmm. and you knew that it would take time Mm -hmm. and maturity and Mm -hmm. growth and shout out to my husband Adam who's going to be doing transition at church in a couple of weeks what a guy love him so much awesome (laughs) yes (laughs) um but I think one other thing too that we just wanted to like extend our hearts out to people who have gotten a divorce or they you know they have mm-hmm. been in those situations. Yeah. We kind of agreed that we're not like experts in that. Mm-hmm. We don't we don't know about mm-hmm. that, but the Lord yeah. does. Like yes. we love yes. you so much. The Lord loves you yes. so much. Yes. Um reach mm-hmm. out to us if you'd like to. We'd yeah. love to come beside you and pray yeah. with you and um offer any other insight, love, support, encouragement yes. that that mm-hmm. we can. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for being on the podcast, yes, Krista. Thanks for asking me. Absolutely. <laughs> you bet. I feel so honored. Yes.